Hey everybody, I'm Chris, and I'm reviewing every episode of The Office ever on my channel. And today, we're looking at Mrs. California. She is hot. That's the last two field guides I've mentioned that I find another woman attractive. And to be clear, I love my wife. Is that, is that good? But by the way, Andy's so lucky. It's a date. Hmm? Playful banter aside, we have a lot to dig into, like some interesting relational stuff, some great callbacks, and of course, a look at Dwight Schrute's gym for muscles. So let's go. I understand nothing. The cold opening picks up with Dwight looking down on his co-workers due to his now healthy standing desk. As he lords over the rest of his staff from on high, Jim coerces Dwight to continue standing unwaveringly. He's never, ever going to go back on it, right? That's right, Jim. Standing desks were all the rage in the early 2010s and are still kind of a big deal now, especially as companies have found like a new market in remote workers. Either way, studies are still a little inconclusive on the actual health and productivity benefits of standing all day for work. I have a standing desk in my office, and I'd say about 65% of my time in my desk is probably spent sitting, and the rest is used for more of like mental health thing rather than exercise. But now Dwight's trapped, and if you've ever been stuck somewhere at a concert or something and you can't sit down, you know how he feels. Dwight, perhaps remembering Michael's fantastic idea, has a crutch up his sleeve. I'm designing the chair. It's part of your pants. You sit down, you're supported. I remember your chair pants yeah. idea. And that's not the only callback we have here. When Dwight's talking down to people, we get this bit. I feel like you're in a suicide cult. No, no, no. You're way off on that one. I've been involved in a number of cults, both as a leader and a follower. You have more fun as a follower, but you make more money as a leader. The opening concludes with some shocking maturity inside of immaturity. You know I have to do this. I know. <laughs> But the episode itself begins with a shockingly clear set of instructions for Andy. In four seconds, my wife is going to be coming through that door. I told her she can work here under no circumstances can that be allowed to happen. Which I'm gonna admit, the premise has me gripped. Andy is fairly spineless, and I'm pretty sure we can drop any clip here to demonstrate that. Quick nap at my place and we hit the tears down. No, I don't wanna do any of that. Duh. Which is why I was joking about doing it. Sell me this car. Shake my hand. Yeah. All right. I don't know if there's any one place that has all these things. It's not my problem. A thousand-year-old church in the continental United States. You read my notebook and, and photocopied it and distributed it. No. Oh. <laughs> they did and they asked me to ask you about it. So a setup of Andy attempting to be obedient to Robert and so publicly defy the CEO while shattering the albeit relatively low hopes of Mrs. California at the same time, it's a cringe gold mine and I enjoy watching this one play out. Now that Robert and his wife are officially in the office, the episode cuts to deep within the bullpen with this line, that I don't remember at all. That's why my foundation, the Dream for a Wish Foundation, is gonna put them out of business. They're not gonna know what hit them. That's so Brian. Ah, uh, it's actually Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Yeah. Bitch. Meanwhile, Dwight, still trying to make a buck, creates the Dwight Root Gym for Muscles. Taking a stroll through this room, there is a lot of comedy stuffed into this ridiculous gym, which includes heavy water jug, bench press station, unlike a park bench, by the way weighted pebbles in lieu of free weights, a very old scale to weigh yourself on. I think this is a staff, and I'm not sure what this is. I think it's some sort of old-timey wheel system. It's like the kind of thing that would like be on an old baby carriage or something. He mentions the gravel yoke squat system, the phone book tearing station, tin snipping station, and an axe cutting station. And then back here in the corner, we got some bochi balls, some sort of loom. And I asked my mom, who likes antiques, and she had no idea what that was but it is suspiciously not the same toilet paper loom Dwight had in his office previously. We also have a butter churning station, a tire swing, and multiple tires to sledgehammer. This is a fantastic layered joke because as weird as it is, so much so that Daryl calls it out, Dwight has brought stuff that a farmer who's surrounded with antiques probably 
has these things framed in his head as items which increase your overall fitness. Like I've been going out every day over the last two weeks and chopping down a stump in my backyard with an ax. It's like a cardio burner and not to mention lots of muscles that I don't otherwise use. It's also a lot of fun and you feel really accomplished when you make progress. Super hard work, super sore all the time. But back to the gym, not surprisingly, a lot of the workout equipment here are forearm burners, which is a muscle group that at least most old farmers I've ever met have a disproportionate strength in. It's all a goofy bit, but I love when the office uses the new office space for different reasons like Dwight's daycare ah! and his office. Cece will become world famous for stripping. Meanwhile, the higher ups upstairs discuss which job would be a good fit for Susan, Robert's wife. And the CEO is really doubling down and pressing hard in front of his wife for Andy to hire her. And he lays it on so thick that Andy consents and extends an offer to the CEO's wife. Well, then welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> Something Robert isn't really happy with, obviously, and he tells Andy to fix it. Andy's fix is to have everyone just be mean to her. That can be fixed by all of us being mean to her. Which in fairness, everyone's had kind of a different reaction to her so far. She's simply wonderful. Bitch. And then we get a few scenes where we see people treating Susan kind of badly, and it feels weird that even some of the cooler heads around the office go along with Andy's instructions. The coalition for reason is extremely weak. But back to DSGFM, Dwight lays out to us his two-step plan to build his business. First, he wants to make a quality product, which he does by getting the same day delivery of thousands of dollars of gym equipment. And then two, a solid marketing plan. You gotta get the black people to do it to get the white people to do it. Then you gotta get the black people to stop doing it, one step at a time. And this strategy works. He's grown his memberships from zero to two. And even more, by the way, there's some fantastic cut content here with Dwight in the gym. You have got to be kidding me, no shower. Exercise lengthens life improves mood, boosts sex drive. But while everything's working out downstairs, upstairs, Mrs. California tricks Andy into revealing that her husband is the reason for all of the shenanigans of the day. So he is mixed up in this, isn't he? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Got it. And this creates an impasse with Andy telling the truth, Robert denying it wholeheartedly. <laughs> lying son of a bitch. And Susan knowing that, you know, something's up. This all leads to a hunt for Jim to provide that secondary witness corroborating story thing. And Jim takes this conflict avoidance to new and zany heights. Creed, I was never here, all right? Okay. What about your friend? Oh boy. But it doesn't last too long and now confronted, Jim does what he actually does best, which is just talk about how much he loves Pam. And then he and Andy are released for the couple to have what I think is and bear with me, it's been so many years since I've actually watched this season of The Office, the most quiet divorce conversation of all time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Robert California is good at manipulating people. He does so with lofty confidence and a lot of direct eye contact. He reads people and he knows how to work them like pawns on a chess set. But in this episode, he seems off his game coming in hot and half cocked, doubling down when he should have let off, and overall just kind of a sloppy version of normal Bobby. The dude is an enigma. Seems like maybe something rocked his confidence. Could it be? It was just actually cookies the whole time. Maybe that did have a profound impact on the character. Still stand behind my rating for that episode, but let's see how this unfolds with the loss of his lady love for the rest of this season. But for now, let's dive into the deeper meaning. What does a bean mean? Someone please explain it to Kevin. We have three couples to look at in this episode. Robert and Susan, Jim and Pam, and Daryl and Val. They're all in very different stages. Daryl hasn't really even made a move on Val yet, and it's revealed in the stinger of this episode that his motivations for working out is to peacock for Val's affection. Jim and Pam are Jim and Pam, and have been the exact same for quite some time. Even after kids, though, Jim is still like, yeah, I love this woman. I love this woman! She brings out the best of me. I love working with her, yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada, yada. Robert and Susan 
Well, we don't have much to go off of with them. Uh, we do have this deleted scene. I love my wife. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I don't think that it was even established prior to this episode that he was even married, which actually makes for an interesting take. If to add to the shock of Andy's instructions in the morning, if Andy didn't even know he was married either, that would have been an, an interesting little element. There could be a lot of reasons why Robert doesn't want his wife working at Dunner Mifflin Scranton. Maybe he knows she's an absolute hottie and wants to keep her all to his own. And maybe, since we found out Susan used to work for him, Robert doesn't want her to work there anymore because he knows she's not a good worker. Or maybe he knows that things are on the down and out between the two of them and is planning a quick and clean getaway. And having her work for him might complicate the divorce process. R Robert splitting his time between Tallahassee and Scranton, by the way, I think would definitely make things difficult between the two. Let alone, you know, you're married to Robert California, and that's going to have its ups and downs. Your daughter, Cecilia, what does she think of the street? Uh, the street. Sesame Street. So we see the theme emerge, right? Jim wants to work with Pam, but Robert doesn't want to work with Susan. Val doesn't want to work with someone that she works with. So Daryl gets to working out. What do you want? To look good for Val. Val Kilmer? Watching this episode, I do ask myself, do I want to work with my wife full time? And every relationship's different because we're all unique butterflies and all that. But the answer to that question can be kind of telling to some interesting dynamics in your relationship. There are definitely areas of work that my wife and I do not work well together at all. Like if we go clean out our storage room with all of our junk and our keepsake stuff in the basement, that's a project that we're gonna be at each other's throats on. I'm like, hey, we gotta throw away all of this. It's been in this box for three years and before that it was in this box for four years. I don't think we need it anymore. Let's send it down the river Sticks, AKA some donation center and let it await its afterlife there. And she, my wonderful bride, won't even respond to me at that moment because in her ADHD fueled fervor, she's lost her mind and her heart as she stares at these like old 24 piece set of pots and pans reminiscing about all the meals we shared together as a family, which she's an excellent cook, love family meals, but like it's gotta go. There's no reason for it. Let's get rid of it. And now she's offended because I'm like, erasing our memories and uh you know i'm just getting hot and tired and don't really want to stand around while she reminisces over stuff so yeah all of that super fun not really a way we work together but on the other hand we started this business born out of conversations that we had during lockdowns and it's been like a hundred times more time and energy sucking than we had expected at all but i gotta say it's super cool getting to partner together in ways that we've never really been forced to do so in the past. She really trusts my business and marketing mindset, and I really trust her culinary and people skills to the point that we rely on each other wholeheartedly, completely trustworthy to get things done. And we work hand in hand, celebrate the victories, sweat our balls off out in the sun or freeze our whatever. <laughs> We have a lot of fun together in the process. It's really cool and it's nothing that I really ever expected us to do. And even in the process of that, we learned so much about each other and we're able to relate to each other in different ways, personally, outside of business. So from a writing standpoint, it's possible that the framing of working together professionally was just a metaphor for working together relationally. And if that's the case, then it assumes that all relationships are work, which I would agree with. Daryl's doing what he can to put in the work for someone who doesn't seem to really want to work back with him. Jim and Pam surely have to do some work to keep that fire going and keep the relationship lasting long. But the real focus of the episode is Robert and Susan, who no longer seem to want to work together in any way, shape or form. She can work here under no circumstances. So with that, let's date this thing. Date this thing. Oh, that wasn't even a joke. Let's rate this thing. This is the worst. Okay, I'm not gonna chew too much of this here. Do all the YouTube crap, please. That's all great, it helps me out a lot. This cold opening is where the series should be living, in my opinion. This is fantastic. It's a solid evolution from the early Jim Dwight stuff. I love it, four out of five. 
<laughs> would be a five out of five, maybe if, you know, something was a smidge more believable in the climax of that cold opening, but it's great nonetheless. As for the episode, okay, going into this one, I was not extremely excited. For whatever reason in my head, I was kind of thinking this was not going to be a good episode. I don't remember enjoying this. But the cringe is on point, y'all. Like, Andy trapped in between a rock and a hot lady, and it's hard to watch this all play out. It's a bit extra, like this wouldn't really happen in real life, but at this point, all of the grounded stuff from The Office isn't really in play anymore at all. So using Robert California like this, it does work. The eccentric, rich guy who's out of touch and just expects people to play his you know game uh, still i think there's not much memorable about this episode mainly because i didn't even remember this was an episode at all and honestly there's not a single tattoo idea that i think you can even pull from this one <laughs> so challenge there in the comments leave the one if you can think of one they did delete this jim though you know, Stanley's tie is really the story of the day. It's my birthday. So, all up, I'm going to give Mrs. California 10 out of 10. No, well, the, okay. Uh, <laughs> Hot. So, all up, I'm going to give Mrs. California the episode a 3 out of 5. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this one. Leave them in the comments. And join us next time when we cover Christmas Wishes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. We promised we'd never say goodbye.